Coroutines in Unity are a pretty useful, with them you can for example wait for a certain amount of time, so it can be used for timers and cooldowns, which is what I will show you how to do today. It is also used in animations, or you can use it to significantly improve performance of your game. In my scene I just have a two panels and two texts, one will be for the timer, which will be just displaying the time in seconds, and second one is for the cooldown, which will just tell us if we can use some skill based on the cooldown or if we can't use it. And I have just created two scripts, which I have added to the texts, and we will start with the timer, where I will explain you what the coroutines are. So if you want to create a coroutine, you need to create something called iEnumerator. Then we can just give it some name, so this can be the timer coroutine, and then just the parentheses, and then curly brackets, like you would normally do it with the void, for example. But you can see that it is giving us error, because in the coroutine you actually need to give it some yield. What is the yield? It allows you to do some stuff with time. So I can say yield return and for example new wait and you can see that there is a lot of stuff. I usually use the wait for seconds so we can just tell it to wait let's say for one second and now we can see that it gives us no error. What you can also do is yield return now which will just skip the current frame, which can also be useful. To the coroutine you can add parameters as you would do it in the normal void. So I can let's say add int, which can be for the time, and I can say yield return new wait for seconds, and we can wait for a certain amount of time, which we input into the parameter. But now the coroutine wouldn't do anything because we haven't started it. So how do we start the coroutine? You just say start coroutine and then into the parentheses you write the name of the coroutine, which is the timer coroutine, and then into the next parentheses you can write the parameters. So I could say, for example, 5, which is for the time, and now we would just start this coroutine, it would wait 5 seconds and do nothing. Here I can, for example, say debug.log. So now after we start the coroutine, it should wait for the time, which is 5 seconds, and after we have waited, after this has finished, it will tell us for how long it waited. So I have started the game, now it should wait for 5 seconds, and it should tell us, yep, yeah, you can see that it waited for 5 seconds. So this is the basic stuff for the coroutines. Also, you can start the coroutine when you just input the string, but I don't recommend this to you because here you can't input the parameters. So you can just call it like that with the string, but again, this is not uh, the best option. And now we will do the timer. So you could also do the timer using the update, but this isn't very effective because the update is called every frame and when you want to have just seconds on the timer, then it is just unnecessary to call it every frame when you need to call it only every second. So what we can do in the coroutine, I can just say while true, which is true always. I usually don't use the while because it can break your game, but here it is actually good to use it. So while true, this is true all the time, we can just say yield return new wait for seconds. You can also use the wait for seconds real time, which is not the scaled time, so obviously we will wait for one second. And what this is going to do, that when we start the coroutine, which we want to do only on the start, it will run this while, wait for one second, and while it is waiting, it is doing nothing, so we are not calling it again and again. What I can do is create integer, which will be for the current time in seconds, and after we wait the one second, I can just set the time to plus equals 1, so it will wait one second, then add the time, and then it will get back to the while and wait for one second, add time, and so on. What I have also added is the start time, so into the coroutine we can input the time, which will be for the start time, and I can just set the time at the beginning of the coroutine to the start time, and then we can just add the time to it. 
I have added the using unit engine UI because we want to change the text. I have added serialize field variable for the text. And then in the update, I'm just setting value of the text to value of the timer. Now you can see that the timer started at the five and it is adding one second every second. Next thing you might want to do with the coroutines is to stop the coroutine. I have just added if statement when I press the space, I want to stop the coroutine. What we can do is we can say stop all coroutines, which will obviously just stop all coroutines on this behavior. But you might want to stop just this coroutine. What you can't do is you can't just say stop coroutine and then input name of the coroutine. You need to have reference to the actual coroutine that you have started. So what we can do is create variable, which will be of type coroutine. We can name this coroutine. And when we start the coroutine, we can just store it in the variable coroutine. So coroutine equals start coroutine which is the coroutine that we have started. And when we want to stop it, we can say stop coroutine. And now into the parentheses, just type the variable that is holding the current coroutine. So coroutine. The timer starts at the number of five. And when I press space, you can see that nothing is happening because we have stopped the coroutine. Now I will show you how to do the cooldown, which will be pretty similar to the timer. Into the cooldown script, I have added variable for the cooldown text, then variable for the boolean, if we can use the skill or not, and then just uh, we are setting the text. If the cooldown bool is true, then we can use the skill, and if not, we need to wait for the cooldown. For this, I will again create the i enumerator, which we can name the cooldown, into the parameters, we can also input the length of the cooldown. So when we start this coroutine, we can set the cooldown bool to false. Then we can wait for some seconds. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And we can wait for the length. And then again, after we have waited for the time, we can set the cooldown bool to true. So now just when we press the space, we can say start coroutine and then just the name, which is the cooldown and then time for which we want to wait, let's say two seconds. Now it is telling us that we can use the skill. So when I use it, you can see that it waits for the cooldown and now we can use it again. It also stops the timer because I have set it to the same key, but this works fine. You can see that coroutines are pretty useful. You can do definitely a lot more stuff that I have shown you today. It can help you optimize your game, make custom animations, events, cooldowns, timers, and all of that stuff that you would want to have in your game. I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!